How does bullet clearance affect muzzle brake performance? The answers we came up with may surprise you. Gabby Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here with Zach Lester from Salmon River Solutions. Thank you for joining us, Zach. Thanks, Gavin, for having me. The last time Salmon River Solutions came out, it was Ken. Mm -hmm. Ken and I were talking after doing some recoil testing performance with the SRS brakes, and we said, wouldn't it be cool to take a muzzle brake and to start with really tight clearance and to board out progressively and take a look at what the correlation is between that clearance and muzzle brake effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Zach and I have been working on today. And that's what we're gonna show you quantitatively. And we both had predictions and those predictions did not exactly pan out. <laughs> we're gonna nerd out on some data. Uh, don't worry, at the very end of my slides, I have a very concrete description visually of how muzzle brake clearance affects recoil. Before we get into that, let's talk about Salmon River Solutions, AKA SRS, the acronym, mm -hmm. two basic product categories. Let's talk about those product categories real quick. Uh, pretty much muzzle brakes and um, archer rails, all geared towards lightweight hunting is our, mm -hmm. our target market. Um, but we have a lot of other people that, you know, from different areas that enjoy our products. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, our brakes are titanium. That's our, our focus to keep stuff yep. light. And our archer rails are also light um, as well. So that's kind of our target market. Yeah, you've got the combo rails where you've got Picatinny and mm -hmm. Arca on one section, different lengths. If you guys have watched my seven PRC builds, the two of them, the long range seven PRC rifle, the Freedom Rifle and the full custom Bergara build, we had SRS bits on both of those. One of my favorite brake jobs that I've done was, <laughs> it's a funny brake job, the uh, <laughs> OD Green Cerakote on the Type Pro 3 ST turned mm -hmm. out phenomenal. Look good. Yeah, super good stuff. So you're gonna wanna check out the other videos I've also done multiple rail upgrade videos. That's a great way to take your regular old hunting rifle and give it some extra versatility. Throw an Arca rail on or throw on a combo rail. Okay, let's talk about the brake that we used for the testing today. Sure, so we uh, made a stainless steel uh, four port Chubb series brake. Um, we don't sell them on our website, but mm -hmm. we made it and felt it'd be a good test brake to try out this little experiment. Now, usually I go with the self timers which are machined flawlessly. You know, you, can, you can't even really see the line if you tighten up the nut against the, uh, the body of the brake. But for this, we did a non-self timer. We timed it on the lathe so that we could very quickly come back up after an, a successive boring pass, hand tighten the brake on the rifle, and fire a couple more shots. Let me talk about the rifle real quick. This is one of the Ultimate Reloader rifles, full customs. We've got a Foundation Genesis 2 stock. We've got a BAT TR action. This one has the Leupold Mark V HD. More info, rifles.ultimatereloader.com. We've got a wait list that you can get on for that. And of course, we have a 5824 threaded muzzle. And so this rifle, really solid. It works really good on the recoil rig because the butt pad gives a really nice recoil signature. And, you know, we were talking about this on the phone. We thought, where do we start? And you know, usually when I put a brake on a rifle, I bore it to bullet diameter plus 30 thousandths of an inch. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to start a little bit tighter. We were kind of going back and forth. Ah, do we try for five thou? What if things don't line up right and we get a bullet strike? So we decided to start at 10 thousandths of an inch. That seemed like kind of a reasonable place to start. Sure. <laughs> and we've got normal 130 green hunting ammunition. 6.5 Creedmoor, just standard factory ammunition. And so we went through the process of testing different clearance setups. First, we started with no break at all, the bare muzzle. Mm -hmm. And here we're recording two shots for each. And what we saw was we saw some really tight overlap between that first test that we did at 10 thousandths of an inch, mm -hmm. between the first pass and the second pass. That gave us really good validation that the quality of the data was really good. So we did bare muzzle, we did 10 thou over bullet diameter, 20 thou, 30 thou, 50 thou, and then we stepped it up a little bit. We went to 100 thou over, and then 200 thousandths over. 
And I'll tell you what my prediction was. My prediction was be was that we would get the best recoil reduction with the tightest fit. I had the same expectation. Yeah, because I thought it was going to just blow more gases out the side, more braking action, mm -hmm. right? And that, you know, it would just kind of sort of linearly or on some logarithmic scale, something kind of correlate between the two. Mm -hmm. And so here's what we actually saw. Okay, so first off, we've got a huge reduction in recoil from bare muzzle to any of the braked setups here. Almost half. Yeah, yeah. So peak forces way down, as you can see on the graph here, area under the curve, which is really the, the total recoil event that you feel. You know, you've got a real sharp tap or you've got a long gentle push. They can both result in the same net effect, right? It might feel a little bit differently, but maybe your shoulder is moving back at about the same speed. But using a brake, you can see here, you're gonna get a huge cut down in recoil and this brake does a really effective job. This is gonna be right up there with any of the best brakes that I've tested in terms of just raw recoil reduction. Mm -hmm. But what we didn't expect was how tightly everything else was, <laughs> was, was clustered there. You know, all of the clearances that we tested had good recoil reduction. That's all of the non-dotted line ones here. Mm -hmm. Kind of crazy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> against our expectations for sure. Yeah. Okay, so if we isolate just the braked tests, here's what we see. And as you can see, there are differences. And, and we kind of saw this, this recoil event very uh, consistently repeat itself. There's sort of two force peaks. We've got the initial force peak. And then we've got a secondary force peak. And if you look at the graph with the bare muzzle, the second force peaks aligns pretty much with the main peak on that bare muzzle graph. So I'm assuming there's what's happening while the bullet is traveling down the bore. There's what's happening while it's going through the ports. And then there's what happens when the rifle maybe completely compresses the butt pad, bottoms out completely, mm -hmm. and then starts to move forward. So this very consistent, very predictable, essentially, and if we zoom in on really that, that tight area where we can see the differences, we basically saw everything sticking in the same general vicinity until we went from 100 thousandths to 200 thousandths. Mm -hmm. And that's when we finally saw the reduction in forces start to diminish, right? We had more force, less effectiveness of, of the break. That was the big jump, yeah. Yeah. And this was very this was very consistent in terms of, you know, the data that we collected. So we're going to ratchet through here. Here's the 10 thousandths clearance, 20 thousandths clearance, 30 thousandths clearance, 50, a little hard to see, sorry, that's yellow there, <laughs> 100 thousandths, and finally the jump at 200 thousandths of an inch clearance. So we're at 264 bullet diameter, that's 464. A lot of clearance. Four diameter through the brig. <laughs> we had <laughs> some fun on the Precision Matthews TL 1660. We used reamers for some of the tighter, the tighter bore dimensions because you know we had a boring bar that was pretty fat, and then once we had enough clearance, we would do successive passes, you know, boring through. And it's just it's just really, really interesting. So if we look at the numbers, here's another visualization. So if we look at clearance versus forces, we sort of broke down that first peak and then the second peak. So we've kind of got two peak force lines on the graph here. Mm -hmm. The first peak was lower in all cases mm -hmm. and the second peak was higher. What was really interesting about this, and this does not include the bare muzzle on this graph, was that we kind of had a convergence and then a divergence, and then things kind of stayed parallel, mm -hmm. right? Pretty similar. Yeah. So, you know, peak forces on the low side were in the mid 400s, and on the high side we're at 602 pounds. And remember, we we're over a thousand with the bare muzzle. So, definitely a really big difference. Um, some additional visualizations: the total time was the was the smallest, and this does include the bare muzzle on these graphs, the, the far left 
starting point of the graft is the bare muzzle. But still, we're talking about the difference between eight milliseconds and just over nine milliseconds, right? So it's still, you know, in terms of the total time, it's closer and more consistent than I would have initially thought. Pretty minuscule, yeah. Yeah. And peak force here, again, we've got the bare muzzle at the far left of the graph. It goes down. 20 and 30 thousandths of an inch were the lowest, which is cool because we both have used 30 thou. Typically where we oversize that, yeah. As a guideline, yep. So if you're at 264 bullet diameter, you'd be at 294 bore diameter. You'd bore it out to that diameter, the break, all the way down through, through all the baffles and all the ports. And then it's just odd how flat this graph is, the mm. peak force graph, you know? 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths, 50, 100, 200. You know, yes, we did. I, I think you would definitely feel the forces at, at 200 thou clearance mm -hmm. more. Sure. Yeah. But still, if you look at the graph, it's just, it's not nearly as, you know, <clears throat> distinct, I guess. Not what we expected. Right. I expected a lot more slope on that line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this brings up a lot of really interesting questions. Uh, but I think the graph visualization that probably brings it all home the best is this recoil impulse. So if you look at the entire graph of each recoil graph line, we're looking at the area under that curve. So again, if you take that sharp jab or the long slow push, we're really looking here at the net effect. So the units are pound seconds. And here we can see, again, kind of like with peak force, we start out really high for total impulse. We go down 20 and 30 thousandths are by far the best result. And then we climb slowly, but it's not that, that, that drastic effect that we kind of thought was going to happen. No, surprising. Yeah. So given this, what is your takeaway? Uh, from the data we collected, 20 to 30 thousandths bore clearance on a muzzle brake seems to be the most effective clearance as far as felt recoil mm -hmm. from the data we collected. Yeah. Which seems to be kind of an industry standard for yeah. the most part too. I think for me it, it is validating in that way, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering about a couple other things. I'm wondering about POI shift and effect on precision. So if you picture the bullet going through the bore of the brake, you know, gases are venting off to the side and there's some gases on e either side of the bullet, kind of <coughs> alongside it and ahead of it. Some turbulence. Yeah, that kind of a thing. If you have more clearance, and this is a theory, I don't have any data on this. If you have more clearance, I'm thinking you're going to have less POI shift because the pressures are bound to be a little bit lower mm -hmm. along the sides of the bullet. There's more clearance, it's, it can get away more quickly and, and more easily, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm also wondering if you have one side of the brake closer to the bullet, you have more clearance on the other, say a bad muzzle threading job or mm -hmm. something like that, you know, is that going to lead to POI shift that's consistent with precision or with turbulence and other effects, is that going to open up your groups? Have to have me back out to do some more <laughs> testing. <laughs> That's right. This is this has been awesome. I mean, it was really fun to do this, but it's also really challenging some of those assumptions that I had. Very much so. Yeah. And like we talked about, I'm interested to take a look at your some some of your design iterations and upcoming designs, mm -hmm. and maybe use using this recoil rig as a as a tool to mm -hmm. to fine tune some of that. Sure. Give some really good data. Yeah. Okay. So our question for you is, first, were you surprised by the results? You know, what was your initial, initial assumption about what was going to happen? And based on the data that we've shown, what, how does that affect your thinking about muzzle brake effectiveness and or what kind of clearance you would want to run, whether you're a gunsmith or having a rifle built or having a brake installed? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. And of course, this discussion is definitely ongoing as we learn more from this recoil rig about all sorts of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. So thank you for coming out, Zach. Thank was, you, Gavin. It was fun to hang out and fun to do some data analysis together and testing. And I'm looking forward to trying out a lot of your 
other products and incorporating them into more builds and stuff. It's awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So make your voice heard. Drop a comment. Let us know what you're thinking. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.